Doug Goldstein, eFuturist, Bio 2017. We're in the Maryland Life Sciences Bio Health booth, and I have Jeff Galvin, American Gene Technologies. You're doing some incredible things. Tell us about your company and those incredible things. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, uh, we're a viral vector company. We've been developing a lentiviral vector platform for about 10 years now that we inherited from NIH, so it was already quite advanced at that time. And we've made a whole bunch of different enhancements that makes it essentially a platform on which we can develop a variety of different uh, therapeutics or even cures to uh, different diseases. Yeah, so uh, what we're working on right now is we have three focus diseases to prove out this platform because we want to get into the clinic and show that this is efficacious. And the first one that is going to go into the clinic is HIV. We have an HIV functional cure that's going to allow us to treat a patient once and restore their natural immunity to HIV, treat it just like a regular virus. They won't have to take their antiretroviral therapy anymore. They won't be contagious. They can't get AIDS. And guess what? They can't even be reinfected ever with another HIV virus because we are putting in knockdown inside the T cells. The T cells are the, 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 uh, the cells in your body that protect you against HIV that prevents HIV from co-opting those cells. That's why HIV is so successful in people's bodies. It's because it eliminates those guardians that make sure that it can't spread. Well, we can actually make those guardians immune to HIV, and then we, we actually have a process by which it's called a cell therapy. We go ahead and take the patient's blood, pull it out, we amplify the, the cells that are particularly responsible for HIV, for surveilling HIV and killing it, and then we protect them three different ways with a lentiviral vector that strips the surface of something called CCR5. CCR5 is the handle that HIV uses to get into it, so it can't get in, and then we even put microRNAs inside that shut down HIV if it even was to able to get in. So we can essentially make you immune for life against HIV even if you're already infected. That's what I call, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just the first. You have two more that you're focused on? We have two more focused products, that's right. So we have an immune oncology approach, which is different than uh, a lot of other companies that are out there. You're probably familiar with something called CAR-T, which is being used in liquid cancers. So what they do is they take out T cells and they transform them to make them like hunter killers of B cells. And this, since the B cell is where the, car the carcinoma is, uh, it ends up eliminating the cancer and you get extended life that way. But here's the problem. You have these permanently transformed T cells in your body by specific T cells. Normally T cells have one antigen receptor. Now you've got uh, T cells that have dual antigen receptors. So this is an abnormal immune system and we think it's a little bit dangerous to leave the immune system in an unnatural state. So our philosophy is treat the cancer, not the immune system. And how do we do that? We have something called the immunotox vector. It carries in some uh, RNAIs that shut down the checkpoint molecules on the surface of the cancer. What is this doing? It's decloaking the cancer because the, these checkpoint molecules like uh, PDL1, you know how K Truda can actually block PDL1 and it can reveal the cancer to your immune system and increase your immune system's ability to eat it. Well, we can get rid of that and other checkpoint inhibitors all at the same time with one vector. But then we also convert those cancer cells into factories that create stimulatory peptides to that exact T cell that surveils your body at all times for cancer. And it raises their chewing power 300 to 600 times the normal level. Now, if you're in this field, you'll understand this is like zoldronic acid on steroids, but only locally, right? Because we're treating the tumor. So in the rest of your body, you're not getting that massive stimulatory effect. It's in the local environment, and that cancer just melts away. But here's the cool thing, is those stimulated T cells have to go back and forth to uh, other parts of your body in order to replicate. And so as a result, they go past a lot of the metastases in an activated state. And, as, and, and they will actually, we're showing in animal models now, that they eat the metastases as well. 
So this may turn out to be good in late stage cancers, but it would be very effective where there's some risk that there's been a metastasis. So it's a very exciting thing because once the cancer is gone, then the stimulation is gone. Your body is exactly normal again. There's no transformed T cells in your body. This has been shown to be effective in liver cancer, but it also is effective in any epithelial cancer. So we've been able to get this to work in prostate cancer, breast cancer, head and neck cancers, colon cancer. So we can start applying this to different places. We started in liver cancer because it's an unmet need. 30,000 people a year uh, die of this in the United States. Uh, it, one form of this cancer takes a thousand lives a month. So, and that's the one that we're going to start off with. So are you FDA approved on the HIV and the cancer solutions? We're uh, just preclinical on both of those. So the HIV one, we had a pre-IND meeting last October. We got the definition of the IND that we had to submit, and that will be submitted in November of this year. And um, the, uh, you know, we know that we can get the data. The real gating item in there is getting clinical grade materials to repeat the safety experiments. But the FDA has already agreed to our rationale for human trial and they've defined the, the safety parameters that we have to meet. And we're in the process of putting together that thousand page document, but we'll have it ready in, in November for them. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, so we had uh, OMG, then we had WOW. <laughs> wow. I'm afraid to ask what the third one is. Well, the third one is more typical of our industry. Because you think about viral vectors, what they are is we're cracking open a virus, right? And we're taking out the disease and throwing it away. And then we're putting in genes that make your cells better. Well, the absolute like slam dunk application of this is what you see all the viral vector companies doing. If you're not making a gene product and that's what's causing the disease, we call that a monogenic loss of function disorder. Well, all we need to do is put that gene in your body and the disease will probably go away, right? Well, we have one disease like that called phenylketonuria. Now, this is a big one. Easy for you to say. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tongue twister. A lot of these diseases are. We're also doing familial dysautonomia. Only 400 people on earth have that, that disease. But anyway, the, 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 the words are hard to say. Um, but anyway, what we're doing in, in PKU is just what you'd expect. It turns out the reason you have the disease is you don't make a normal phenylalanine hydroxylase. So you don't break down phenylalanine in your bloodstream. It builds up. It gets toxic right? And also you're starved of tyrosine because downstream of the processing of uh, phenylalanine is the creation of tyrosine, which is essential for nerve health in the brain. Dopa and all the different things that keep your brain healthy and developing, right? There's no way to replace that right now. All they can do is hold down the fee so that you don't get the toxicity. But the problem is, is that people who have that disease still go on to get severe depression, schizophrenia, and suicidal thoughts. Okay, now it is really simple. Just replace the PAH and it goes away. But there's a couple of complexities that we've solved that make us really different than the other companies out there. One is that to get enough PAH to mitigate the disease, you would have to put so much viral vector in the body, it would be toxic, just the virus itself, just the merging with your cells. So we've created a synthetic gene that expresses at a thousand times the normal level of the human gene. And as a result, we can actually get therapeutic levels of PAH without having to put in anything more than what's called a, a five multiplicity of infection. What it means is five viral particles per cell. That's well within what the FDA has established as being safe. They, they believe it's safe up to 20 MOI, but it's actually safer beyond that, but they haven't proven it or accepted it yet. But at five MOI, clearly well within that therapeutic index. That's one issue that we've solved now that nobody else has. And then another issue is this. There's a thousand mutations of that gene. The Chinese believe that it may be responsible for intelligence, personality, temperament, all these different things, the different types of mutations that you have. But if you have mutations that are toxic, they can actually knock down the effect of good PAH. So it's not the same. You can't just slam in a new PAH gene. We can deliver that easily. So can anybody else. You have to get rid of a thousand mutations at the same time. Guess what? We have discovered and patented a way to get rid of all 1,000 mutations at one sh in one shot. So that is some secret sauce. Uh, yeah, You're doing some so. incredible work. Uh, you. You're based in Maryland. We are. Part of this life.